Hello, welcome to Dentistry and You. I'm your host, Dr. Case Bolt, and with me is my dear friend and colleague, Dr. Gary Ritchie from the University of Missouri, Kansas City. Gary, welcome to Kansas City, Kansas City Alive. Uh, Happy to be here. Great, wonderful. Uh, this is entitled Save Your Teeth, and we're going to talk about endodontic therapy, a root canal procedure. Right. Now, you are a professor of endodontics at the university. Right. Um, endodontics is one of the most key factors in saving teeth. Uh, teeth that have abscessed, become infected, can be saved uh, by this process. Tell me uh, how you have become involved in endodontics and what you think the future of endodontics holds. Well, I became involved in endodontics primarily because the era that I graduated from dental school in, which was the early 60s, endodontics was just becoming very popular. And I felt when I graduated that that was my weakest area in dentistry. So in order to gain more experience, I was in the military and volunteered to do more root canals, and uh, so consequently people started sending them to me. Fantastic. And then later they became more uh, specialty training became popular among dental schools. I and see. And I went and uh, received this extra training. Uh, to become a specialist in root canals does require two additional years of yes. training at a university. Well, that is fantastic. Uh, my experiences with endodontics, uh, root canal therapy, is that it's a very time consuming, very quality oriented, and very, very detailed uh, uh, discipline. In dentistry, uh, that means extra clinic time, chair uh, time, and extra time that's necessary to make that possible. I have a visual aid here that we'll look at in just a moment. And by the way, I wanted to mention to our phone, uh, to our viewers out there, that we are taking phone calls about this very most important process. Uh, we have a caller on the phone right now. Please go ahead. We don't have a phone call. Uh, Dr. Ritchie, I have a uh, visual here, and I'll go ahead okay. and bring it up here so that we can see it, uh, so that the people can see it at home. And it's a detailed uh, uh, illustration of exactly what the anatomy of a tooth is. Right. And you might go ahead and illustrate uh, or, or discuss the illustration. Okay. Well, the area we deal with uh, in endodontics, the word itself means within the tooth. Endo meaning within in the tooth. So what we deal with is a pulp. The pulp tissue comprised of uh, nerve tissue, arteries, veins, even lymph glands, and cells. Originally, when the tooth was formed down in the bone, when uh, you're just a mere infant, two cell layers were forming. One cell layer formed the enamel on the outside of the tooth. This is the part that shows when we smile that does all the work of chewing. Mm -hmm. These have cells on the cells that form the enamels on the outside. So consequently, when the tooth erupts into the mouth, these cells are lost through the chewing and brushing that occurs. Okay, the other cell layers, the one that's going down, forms a dentin. This is the root or the inside of the tooth. And these cells form all the way down. Consequently, they are left inside. Well, they've is, is illustrated down here, we have arteries and veins and nerves serving these cells. These are there to keep these cells alive so the tooth can be formed. Once the tooth is fully formed, they really don't have a function. This enables us, if necessary, to take this out, put a filling in, and keep the tooth. Now due to decay, you know, if, if we have decay that goes in the side of the tooth, reaches this pulp, we receive a blow that fractures the tooth off into the pulp. Bacteria can get in and cause an inflammation. This is what gives us a toothache. You know, I equate it to something like a splinter and you get swelling and pain. The inflammation is just the same, only being confined to this hard structure, it has no place to go. So what we do as an endodontist, make an opening through the top of the tooth, remove all this soft tissue the arteries, the veins, the nerve tissue, and the cells. And the object is to get all the way to the end of the root, get the soft tissue out, 
And then the, generally we do this in two appointments because what we want to do is put medication to kill off any bacteria that are left inside, make this a sterile field inside the tooth, make sure the patient's having no more discomfort. Then we return and we put a filling all the way down the root to the, out, to the very tip of the root. Now people say, well, now I've got a dead tooth. You do from the aspect that if you put cold on it, if you drill on it, uh, you won't feel it because you're missing the nerves inside. All of that is removed. Right. But as illustrated, right down here, we still see these arteries and veins and nerve going to the outside of the tooth. So if for some reason you said, well, I want that tooth out and grabbed hold, it would still hurt. Of course. Like the tooth. Because of sensation along in this area as well right. as down in this area. Of course. So it's still, even though it's dead perhaps inside or non-vital, non -vital. as we call it, <laughs> it's not a dead tooth. And it functions just as well as any other tooth and should serve, you know, the lifetime as well as any other tooth. So basically, to paraphrase most of what you're saying, is that either due to a severe blow, an accident, or decay, where decay gets down through the enamel, through the dentin, and into that very, very sensitive area, uh, called that w which right. we call the dental pulp, because of that reason, either due to abscess or extreme sensitivity of the nerves here, then we go back into this area, cut through, remove any debris into both of these canals, this of course being a molar tooth, right. and after that's properly cleansed and antiseptized, I guess that's a good, that's uh, a good word term. for it, uh, then we again place a latex type, or we call it gutta percha. Yeah, it's like uh, a rubber. It, exactly. It comes from a tree in Mexico, just like rubber sap. Right. Cut, and they form it into shape that'll fit in the tooth. And then, of course, this is placed very accurately and specifically down uh, from the top of the tooth all the way down to this point here, both roots, of course, in this uh, particular illustration. And at that point, uh, the tooth is then restored at the top part here. And, uh, of course, I don't have an illustration to show that. I wish I did, but I wasn't able to get one uh, this soon. At that point, the hard structure of the tooth, even though the tooth at this point is a non-living structure, where it had been before, uh, at this point it is still quite useful and very utilizable as a mm -hmm. good solid tooth structure to be uh, functional, be able to chew with it, and perhaps provide a lifetime of service. What? It should. Well, that's a tremendous, uh, mm -hmm. a tremendous service that we can offer our patients, doctor. Yeah, the alternative would be extraction of the tooth. Well, that's not a function. good alternative. Um, <laughs> Usually not. Sometimes, you know, if you've lost a lot of bone or something, sometimes you have to. Exactly. You know, it's beyond us. You know, uh, I wanted to remind our viewers at home that we are allowing telephone calls. If you have a f any question about root canal therapy, please give us a call. And I understand we have a phone call. Please go ahead. Hi. Um, I was wondering what happens if you break off a tooth and you don't get it um, fixed right away? I see. Were you able to hear that question? Yes. Uh -huh. Gary, why don't you answer that question? Well, it depends. Uh, if it breaks off into the... It can break off at several levels. Sometimes just the enamel will break off and all that needs to do is be smoothed down and get the sharp edges off. A lot of times it'll break off through the enamel and take part of the dentin, and this tooth will be very sensitive. You'll get cold on it and get a little shock. A lot of tooth structure broken. Right, but uh, the health of the tooth is not compromised. What it does need to have done is have either a filling placed over it or a crown. Now the problem with letting something like that go is it's illustrated, perhaps the viewers can see these little tiny dark holes there's tubules, I think tubules, they call them. Right. They're laid down in little sections of tubules. And when this is exposed to the oral environment, the bacteria tend to get in these tubules, and their byproducts try to work its way down and cause irritation. And this is the area that when you feel sensitivity to hot and cold foods or sweets, that's what it's doing. It's going through these tubules and irritating the nerve down inside. The proverbial toothache. So the longer you wait, the more chance you have of decay and involvement of the pulp tissue. Now the third fracture would be one all the way down into the pulp 
exposing the nerve of the tooth. In this one, you shouldn't wait very long, but you probably won't because it would be very painful. Extremely and painful at that point. It would remind you to get swift treatment. And that, of course, would be good. <laughs> right. Uh, for both of you, I think. You know, there are two. Um, is our um, uh, viewer still there? Yes, I am. I have another question. I was just wondering, um, do you have to have your wisdom teeth extracted before you can get braces? Well, not necessarily, although I don't deal in orthodontics much, but, uh, oh, it uh, depends a lot of what age you're speaking of. Now, a lot of orthodontics is done on about 10 or 12 years old, and at that time the wisdom teeth aren't coming in. The wisdom teeth tend to come in, you know, we're speaking of these teeth back here, and as they show, I don't know if you can see that or not, 17 to 21 years of age they come in. So many times orthodontics is completed by the time the wisdom teeth come in, if it's a younger patient, and uh, then they have them taken out usually as they get older. Now occasionally an older patient will decide to get orthodontics, and in that case probably most of the time they'll want the wisdom teeth out. Right. You know, uh, again I wanted to thank our viewer for calling, and any one out there that has a question about endodontics, about root canals, please give us a call. We'd love to entertain your questions. You know, Dr. Ritchie, one of the things uh, that I see clinically uh, amongst patients is a wide uh, variety of symptoms involving abscesses. Mm -hmm. Some people virtually have no symptoms at all. They have sort of a a minor ache that's chronic in nature, it kind of hurts, it's been hurting for years, and we take a radiograph, an x-ray, and we find a big area of abscessing, the bone is destroyed here, and, and these people report very, very little uh, discomfort at all. Uh, even, a, even if the minor amount of discomfort, it's, it's very minimal uh, with root canal therapy. Uh, the proverbial pain, the severe pain that we see with root canal therapy has to do a lot when this tissue, the pulp tissue, the, the arteries and veins, the nerves become highly inflamed because they've been irritated because maybe there's an area of decay or maybe a fracture as you would mentioned before. Right. Um, what suggestions would you make uh, uh, to the public as, as far as uh, getting routine thorough dental care to try to detect these problems before they become uh, horrendous? Well, what I tell patients when they come to see me it's like the old oil company uh, advertisement. You can pay us now or pay us later. <laughs> when you come to see me, you're paying later because what you've done generally is avoided having a small cavity filled and now you're starting to get symptoms. And once exactly. you start noticing symptoms uh, that you drink, for example, something cold and it has a lingering pain, you swallow it and the pain lingers on a while, this is, means the pulp is irreversibly involved and it's going to give problems later on. So you know, we recommend as a dental profession twice uh, a year you should have your teeth checked. Sure. Uh, generally a bite wing x-ray that will show any cavities between the teeth. What they need to look for for recognition of if a tooth is becoming involved endodontically Initially, what they'll expect to find is sensitivity to cold, primarily. This is the That's first a, symptom. The first symptom, they'll drink or eat something cold, they'll swallow it, and it won't go away. Like a large filling or a beginning cavity will be sensitive to cold, but it goes away as soon as you swallow it, and the temperature returns to normal. Uh huh. Now, as it gets more involved, the inflammation becomes greater in here, you may get the throbbing pain that kind of wells up. You may find that the hot coffee or hot food irritates it more than the cold. At that point, At the that tooth point. is highly inflamed right. and the pulp is just screaming for help. And At sometimes uh, you reach the stage where hot irritates it severely and cold will actually make it feel better because you're starting to get death of a lot of the tissue you're getting like a, the old gas gangrene. You're exactly. getting necrosis, which heat causes bubbles to expand and puts pressure, causing more pain. I've and had a root canal procedure it. and an abscess tooth, and believe me, I know <laughs> what it feels like. I, the symptoms you're describing are very 
very well described. We have another phone call, and please go ahead. You're on the air. Yeah, I've got a tooth. That it doesn't really hurt, but there's kind of like a pimple on the side of the tooth, and pus comes out every once in a while. Why is that? Okay, what's happened? That's a good question because that leads us to the next stage or two. This inflammation or infection works its way down, gets out into the bone, and then there's this larger this area of, of infection by now because you've got bacteria coming right down. As this grows in size, it goes a larger opening to the bone, eventually works its way out of the bone through the gum tissue, and that drainage you're getting is the infection inside the tooth, the root canal, draining out through the gum tissue. At that point, the bacteria are literally feeding off of the living, right. what's left of the living tissue inside the tooth. But what is very misleading is this is not painful, as the caller said, because all dental pain is related to pressure. I see. Due either to the nerve inside the tooth, or if you have like periodontal pain, it's pressure on the nerve around the tooth. Well, once this breaks through the bone and drains through the gum tissue, the pressure is being relieved. It doesn't hurt anymore. We but have it's just quietly growing. Exactly. We have one more phone call, and I would certainly like to hear from you. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, I'm. I was told I had periodontitis, and my dentist wants me to see somebody else. And I'm kind of afraid because I don't know what to expect. <laughs> I just tuned in, and I'm not sure if you've talked about it. No, because that's another area. It's not really endodontics, but it's closely related because it does involve these blood vessels and nerves we talked about on the outside. And what she was talking about was periodontal disease, which is the inflammation of the gum tissue around the tooth. And this pinkish area that we see right here, what happens is the irritation just between the tooth and this gum tissue. And the same thing we talked about occurring inside the tooth occurs here. And this gum tissue gets red and puffy and it usually will bleed very easily. And sometimes we'll have the drainage coming out that we talked about coming out through the gum tissue from the end of the tooth will be coming out here. So what the dentist wants her caller to do is go to a periodontist which specializes okay. in these diseases. What they do is go between the tooth and the, the root and the gum tissue, clean this area out. Often they'll put medication, various treatments of course, that's a, that's a part for another part right, of dentistry and you. Lecture, but sure. I wouldn't be afraid to go. I would have it done. I definitely want to thank you all for calling and making this a very successful uh, segment. And thanks for watching Kansas City Alive. Come back, you'll see what's on the next edition of Kansas City Alive.